Uh, yeah, I mean, well, it's, you want to get close. The closer, the better, really. Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Joel Benavides with the Squawk Out Podcast. It is the 20th of November, 2020, and it is 9, 10 p.m. Bitcoin trading at 18,797, and uh, uh, Donald Trump currently uh, contesting uh, in certain states still, but it still looks like Biden is ahead in the election i'm joined tonight by a very special guest i'm really excited to have this dude on this is jesse james lozano yes, he sir. is the five time five time five time uh, san antonio five, chess champion yeah. five time san antonio chess champion and master and uh, he's coming on to talk to us a little bit about uh chess and uh and so i'm really really nervous because i think he's probably one of the uh i don't know uh it's uh that's it's it's almost like a royal title right <laughs> like it like when you hear like chess grandmaster i don't know if it's just because there's like you know a queen and a king on the board or there's a certain respect you know uh and maturity that comes with the game of chess and so to be a master or or a grandmaster have some rank within the game um i think that's that's a little elevated do you ever have you have you ever thought about that like in those along those lines or the, it's kind of a general <laughs> question i'm putting you on the spot because oh, no. specifics are easier but yeah no they, they're roar around being a um uh chess masters already pretty good being a chess player is usually pretty already good to impress mo most people it's like oh you play chess and then yeah being this uh, five times stage uh, chess champion Oh man! If I could talk to my younger self, I'd be like, "You're gonna be champion." They're gonna be like, "Oh my god!" I mean, even when I won it for the first time, I was just in shock. And it's it's it really is a big honor for me, and I'm very proud and honored to 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 be at this level. Wow. I never thought I'd make master. So, <laughs> real quick, give me your origin story. Like like in, in a couple of minutes, take me from you know two year old Jesse or you know one year old Jesse to uh you know the point where you got a hold of a chessboard. Sure. Um... Uh, my family is pretty much from Corpus Christi. I'm the only one born here in San Antonio, Texas, born and raised. Um, I wouldn't say anything very special about my childhood. And I was the uh, youngest of three, two older sisters. Um, let's see. Went to school, was always doing good there. You know, straight A's, was in the Gifted and Talented program. I remember uh, first learning chess at like around the age of 10. I, I went to a library because I, I read even a lot till today. I just read all the time. And they used to have a thing there about the... Uh, I forgot what it's called, the Accelerated Reader Program. You'd mm -hmm. read books, you take tests on it, and then you get points, and then you get stuff. So I used to go there all the time and read the books, and um, there was someone teaching chess there. So I went there, learned the game. Um, nothing really big happened. I think I was around, like I said, 10 years old. Was that the library that you were talking about in the news? And we'll get to that in a little bit. That is the library I was at. So yeah. I was there whenever they, you know, it's just a little sign that says, hey, you want to learn how to play chess? So I walked in, and he taught me. You're Mr. Scheibel. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, yeah pretty much, uh, and, pretty much. and we'll get into Mr. <laughs> Scheibel in a little bit. Um, so, uh, so you started uh, practicing, you got a hold of a chessboard, and then when did it go from, you know, just like, like t take me through the journey of just being interested in chess to like really engaging and getting into like strategy and openings and middle game theory and, and, and end game and all that stuff. So I will say at, at 10 years old, I played there for a while. I, he left at some point, like most of the chess programs, unfortunately. They, somebody you know, is running it, they leave, the program dies. So mm -hmm. I played there for a little while in the summer. I played my dad once, he beat me. I'm not playing again. Uh, just, I just stopped playing. It wasn't until, uh, actually I had a few different rivals I'd play with every now and then, but the, the big uh, stepping point for me was whenever I ended up going to uh, Holmes High School. I was a freshman. I was 15 years old. Dude, you went to Holmes? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I went to Holmes. When, oh, okay. did, when, when did you graduate? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, okay. Um, no, well, you don't have to age it. You don't have to date yourself. It's, it's we'll that. talk it's, about it later. Uh, <laughs> I did. So I went to, um, uh, what was it called? Gosh, they, they took out my school, West Campus. I did one semester there. Mm. Then I went to Holmes High School for the second semester of, of high school, mm. of, a, uh, of a, uh, a freshman. And then I started at South San my um sophomore year and then i ended up graduating there so i did one semester at Holmes. okay all right but okay. that is where the the chess actually came to me okay i i uh i i went to school in the harlandell district mm. coming up and then I, I i came over here to to Northside to Holmes. 
Oh, yeah, that's cool. Um, so after uh, after that, like, so talk to me about tournaments. You must have gotten involved in tournaments at some point. That's really how you get to that upper le- that upper master grant. You have to play other. Is that because I okay in the in the? I should say that I approached you through the San Antonio Chess Club Facebook group. Yes, sir. Because me and my daughter got obsessed with the Queen's Gambit, mm-hmm. which is like, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, it's like the number, it's one of the number or top 10 movies or limited series or whatever on Netflix right now. So everybody's obsessed with the Queen's Gambit. Um, and that's probably making you, and we'll get into your business momentarily, but that's making you very busy right now, right? Yeah, yeah it's been a lot of fun. Um, it just sparks up interest. Anytime there's like a, you know, there was called the Bobby Fischer boom, 1972. Bobby Fischer's the only American world chess champion ever to win. Mm-hmm. You have these booms of just great players, or in this case, a, a show, just showing about how great and magical this game can be. And it and it kind of pumps everything up. People that learn the game, and I mean, a lot of times, a lot of time, I talk to people. I, you know, you know, I, I, I play chess. Like, oh, I love chess. I just don't have anyone to play with. Yeah. And that's usually what happens. And so when you see these things, it's like, oh. It's just like a whole little movement start to, you know, migration. And then they all find the chess club and they go there. We have a good time. We play chess. We learn. It's a, it's a fun place to hang out. In. It's the same thing kind of like with fin- like, like stocks and financial vehicles. You might have noticed all the numbers on the screen or whatever. I, I was do. about the Bitcoin. Yeah, right. <laughs> like I'm, into, I'm really into Bitcoin and like also like, you know, stocks, ETFs, stuff like that. And whenever, like in 2017, I ran a meetup and this is probably, I shouldn't be going off on tangents like this, but I am right now. Um, yeah, in 2017, when Bitcoin blew up, kind of similar to what it's doing right now, like I, I ran a meetup and it was like, we packed this little Starbucks, you know, but as soon as the price starts going down, people lose interest. And so it sounds like you're saying something similar goes on with chess. You know, there's moments throughout history that kind of draw people in and then, okay. then lull periods. Um, but you stuck with it. Um, yes. So, so you start going to tournaments. Talk to me about that. So like, um, I went to Holmes High School, and I went to the um, – I didn't know anybody there. I saw they had a chess club, and I was like, I don't know anybody. Let me go there and play some chess. I ended up beating everybody. <laughs> and then, then I was like, oh, this is a very fun game. Um, so Just I, like innate? Like you just just kicked ass and you <laughs> weren't like uh, trying or you hadn't studied? I hadn't like, studied. I, like I said, I had played at 10 years old. I would played a little bit here and there, but not like – nothing like tournament play. Yeah. And tournament play and casual play are two different uh, beasts altogether. You can know, you know when you're talking to a, a as they call it, a coffee house player, and then you play the professional chess player. Yeah. So yeah, I was very much not even a coffee house player. I right? I was still falling for. But there were, but but the room was full of like amateurs, and you just kicked everybody's oh, ass. Well, <laughs> like I'm trying to figure out yeah. like how you like did you said you didn't study, but you beat everybody. Is that accurate? Yes. Well, chess is a very logical game too. So. <laughs> So, so <laughs> you can just by like innate logic, you figured it out. Sure, yeah. yeah. I, I uh, you know, learn some rules, you piece it together. That's one of the great things about chess. I've had games like that where, where like, and, and I told you before we got started that I suck at chess, right? But I, I think a lot of people probably do and they still like it because it's just, it's just a we- it's weird, it's a weird game like that, right? Like, I can- went from like the strongest player in high school to going and playing uh, at Methodist Hospital, which is a chess club I've been playing for six or seven years. We play one game a week on Wednesdays. And, you know, went from the strongest player to going to there. That was professional games, UFC F rated, which means you get a ranking, a national ranking. So people take it very seriously. UFC is United, United Federation States of Chess, chess Federation. Yes, ah, sir. Okay. Yeah. So I, I went there, you, you know, you pay your little money, it's like 15 bucks. Chess is very affordable. <laughs> so I went there and I played and I lost for the uh, first two months straight. Like, it's not like I was just like, hey, I'm just great. I mean, at, at that level, it does take hard work and commitment. This was during or after high school? Um, this is during high school. So I, I went there, beat everybody mm-hmm. in, uh, in high school. And then I was like, well, this is fun. Let me go play a tournament. I went to a Scholastic tournament. I got second place my first tournament. So I was like, yeah, I, sh- I should do more of this. This is good, you know. And is it like Queen's Gambit where you show up and you have to like state a rating or you play in an open or you play beginners? Like how is all of that? Like it's, it's such a magical, I mean, I, I think it's such a magical experience. I mean, every time you go there, cause I'm now I'm a tournament director. So I actually run those tournaments. I run a lot of the kids tournaments now too. Oh, okay. So I'm, you know, I have to help introduce this to all the parents. The parents are overwhelmed. 
because this is just a, it's it's its own niche. This is a society, you know, like anything else that you know. These people get into this. Yeah. So you have to learn the jargon. You have to learn what to talk about. You have to learn where you're supposed to go sit. And people are scared. The kids are in, un, uh, unsure at sometimes. So you have to talk to them. And there's just so many emotions in your first chess tournament. Sorry, man. I thought I, I turned that off. Zelda. That's okay. I swear to God, I turned it off. <laughs> I love me some Zelda. Oh, you no know worries. what? What's what's up? She 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 called twice. I, she knows better. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, but yeah, I got me in between my sip. Um. So uh. So there at the chess tournament, how to how like how how if you were to show up? Oh God, I'm gonna I'm gonna. That's <laughs> no, okay. I can't believe I, this is a. Babe, I'm literally in the middle of a podcast. Is, is it an emergency? Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. You keep on calling and it breaks through the ringer or the do not disturb. I'll talk to you back. Jesus Christ, dude. That's a, that's a precedent that we just set. I've never answered a phone call. No worries. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to figure out. Hold on. I need to figure out how to turn I have to literally turn it off. I don't know. Oh, what it's, the, it's, it's okay, man. Like I said. Um, so... So how is it set up? Like if if a beginner were to show up, and so, like like where, who would they play? How would it be rated? Sure. Um, when you first start uh, playing a chess tournament, you're going to be unrated, uh -huh. just like uh, in the movie with Harmon. Mm -hmm. So you will play uh, one of the lowest ranked players in your section, whichever section you play in. We have, and it's determined by your rankings. Harmon went for the open and played all the hard people, which is just amazing. Typically, we we start the kids off all together or at least the uh, low rating group is the kids like a like a like a disparaging term for any beginner like do you like if a 35 year old man <laughs> who's unrated walks in like is he considered one of the kids you know you know and that's one of the, the interesting things as i was talking to you earlier is like we um when it comes to this you don't get many adults that are really trying to learn i feel bad like it's uh especially tournaments in general they're very intimidating yeah very intimidating so if I paired you up against a kid, how, I mean, how happy are you going to be? Right. And, yeah. it, and the odds of you losing is about 90%. Yeah. Because I, I, I study with my kids. My kids calculate five to 10 moves ahead. They can, you know, they, we, we put the work into it. You know, I, I charge decent oh. money and I, and I, and I, I get what, you know, they get what they pay for. So yeah, it's, it's very intimidating for a lot of adults to even do that. So, so when I, when I started playing after I watched the Queen's Gambit, I looked up the the opening the queen's gambit mm -hmm. like the actual set of moves or whatever and uh and so like i played it on chess.com and i started kicking ass right <laughs> i was like oh shit like i would think i want like three games in a row and like my rating went up and then i saw i started i guessing i'm assuming i started encountering players that knew how to like deal with that mm -hmm. right and i was more familiar with like a queen's gambit accepted than denied but uh which are like just different words. We should say different words for like different phases in the opening, right? When it's when uh, when it's called accepted, that means the the pawn is taken. Uh -huh. When it's declined, it is not taken. Okay, all right. Yeah. And then there's like the thing with the king, like they like the smart move would be for them to bring the knight out like early on. Knight two f six. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so, but like I did that, and I started kicking out, and my rating went up over like three games, and then I encountered those players. And then they just shut me down. Like, and then, it's, oh, yeah. and then it was like a free fall ever since. But, you know, I, I always tell people I'm top 1%. I win, I, uh, especially when it comes to like local games. I, don't, I haven't lost one in like, you can, I go by months and play, I play it weekly. Yeah. You can go online and like I said, top 1%, there's always someone better. I mean, even the world chess champion will lose some games every once in a while because the, the oh my gosh, chess is just so amazing and so um, <laughs> versatile. It just it just gets so crazy. It's 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 impossible to calculate. Um, do you uh, you said earlier in the in the podcast that that chess imitates life? And I can't, do you remember what we're talking about specifically with respect to? Um, um, we're talking about life lessons, and I think we're talking about wow, what was it? Um, oh, uh, the super ego. Right, the super ego. So, like you know, for those who aren't familiar with, we're covering a lot of cerebral topics right now, but. Like for those who aren't familiar with psychology, like the super ego is like the internal judge, right? And when you screw up, you know, doing something, you got that voice in your head all day. It says, oh man, you screwed up. You shouldn't have done that, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you said that chess was something like that. 
just like or that's why chess is amazing is because uh because you you have that voice in your head that super ego it's telling you you screwed up but that's an opportunity to go and fix something right like yes. that's uh because we have that internal voice that internal judge and it's reminding us how we screwed up uh, i think you liken that to chess when you screw up with something you want to go and fix it and so you study you learn and you liken that to the super ego right Definitely. Well, my bachelor's is like psychology, so. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't, you I didn't set tell me you up. that. I'm so. always like trying to, <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, it's um, when when you're dealing with chess, one of the things I've always liked about it, it's very, very empirical. I mean, it's there's a reason why you lose. There's a reason you, you, uh, you can go back and look at the game and see why you lost, and then you can fix it. There's not many things in life, at least I know of, that they give you these kind of chances. Mm. Um you know, chat, life is crazy, especially with psychology. It's really hard to determine where the mistake was and try to fix it. Mm. But chess, it's it's uh, it's right there. That's dangerous. You're you're. So, do you ever use psychology in chess? Like, I mean, do you ever Never. evaluate? No, I'm just kidding. Of course, <laughs> of course ever, yeah. Of course. So, so are you like evaluating the other player? Like, even in the movie, I noticed that there were moments where like Borgov looked at her or Benny looked at her a certain way, like they were analyzing her. Like, for example, when she said that she didn't want to set it up and think it out, Harmon said, I don't want to set it up and think it out. Uh, Benny Watts looked at That's her. That's very rude to say. Is it what, like in chess or just in general? <laughs> oh, as a, as a, if you can imagine two super egos going at it, he's basically saying you're not to my level. You have to, you, uh, he will do it in his head, uh -huh. which I will do a lot of things in my head, but you go sit down and you set it up and you figure it out because you obviously you don't see it, right? Yeah, I mean, I didn't even see the rudeness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there was a lot of things in that show that you would never do as a chess player. Um, even like in the first tournament, whenever Harmony plays against that, I forget the name of that gentleman. He was like one of the masters there. She's playing him and they're just talking in just casual form. And I'm just like, wow, that is so rude. And she's like, you're going to lose. But there's a lot of that in there chess, is. right? Um, and he's and I think uh, not who, a professional play. Not a, okay. it, uh, maybe coffee house in in the, in the things, but if uh, a lot of egos getting thrown around, layman yeah. sense egos, yeah. Oh yeah, if you tried to talk to me in a chess game, I'd tell you to be quiet. Wow, yeah, yeah it, you're it, not gonna. Um, it's because already that that psychology game is getting played. Are you gonna try to mess with me while I'm doing something? Damn, prima donnas for sure. Oh like man, it. no, I would. I've uh, <laughs> TD. This guy's talking. Give me more time on my clock. He's disrupting me during my thinking time. You that that happens. You get extra time if you like. You can call like a foul. In other words. Oh, definitely. Well, I mean, this is my time to think. Uh -huh. This is my time to do it, and you're bothering me during this. So let me ask you a question. Um, he was she was playing Girev, the little boy, the little yes. Russian boy, mm -hmm. and she used like she was she went off and she was acting like impatient and tapping her foot and shit yeah. like that. Could he have, you know, it, it, with the rules you're talking about, could he have asked for additional time or um, like... If, if, it's do, if it's during his time and she's bothering him, uh -huh. if she's tapping Which or doing is, anything... Which was the case, I think. Then yeah. Yeah, he's more than within his rights wow. to do that. And uh, from a psychological perspective, he should do that. She's trying uh. to throw him off his game. He calls it out on her. She's going to have to back up, right? Because he's in the right. The little games that you play between people is, is amazing. Wow. Even um, there was really interesting things that the uh, Russians would do to throw their opponents off. Um, and they talk about this in one of the, the movies with Bobby uh -huh. Fischer, but whenever he got into complicated positions, um, you know, just uh, um, conditioning, they'd start messing with you during the position and start tapping or doing something, and it'd, it'd, start, it'd mess up your concentration. Wow. The little things like that, um, you know, you, you, you don't want to be off in any, in er, any area. Really. That was the name of the book, uh, How to Play Chess by Bobby Fischer. Yes. Or something like that. It was yes. like, How to so, Play Chess by Bobby Fischer. That's a really good book. It, it, One okay. of the first ones right. I read. It, yeah, it seems like like every time you go onto Amazon, look, pull up like a chessboard oh, okay. or That's something. They're, they're yeah. trying to sell you the book with the chessboard. Yeah. That's a really good one. It's a very it's a nice basic book. Goes over a lot of checkmates. It's all uh just reading it with pictures. So it's it really pretty cool. easy for beginners, would you say? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other like books that's like like oh shit, I'm already I'm already cut off. <laughs> uh, are there any other books like for somebody who's just starting out, uh, who that would be like essential in your opinion? One of my best friends, Anthony Guerra, he's also a chess coach. He teaches over at McAllen. He taught me one of the uh, he gave me one of the best books I've ever had for chess, um, and I use it now for teaching all the time. It's called A Book of Morphe. Uh, Morphe the, was a chess master who lived in the 1800s. Oh, have, have you heard about him? Well, they mention him in the Queen's Gambit. He's yeah. the chess genius's genius's genius. So 
even when you think of any any great player these days, they're always going to be like Morphe. Yeah. Morphe. Okay. Morphe. Yeah. She said something in the movie like. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I've watched the series like five times. Right? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, dude. I've only so, said it once. <laughs> yeah, I'm like going to be quoting lines all night. Oh, go for it. Go for uh, it. But he said, uh, she said, at some point, she said, I was so proud of myself when I found an error in a Morphe, Morphe game, and now somebody's done it to me. Yeah, and that's when she was talking to Benny, right? Right, yeah, And yeah. that's exactly or when about he was, Benny, yeah. And that's whenever, you know, he told her, you know, go sit down and <laughs> figure out your mistake. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so, so what was the name of the book again? A book of Morphe. Book of Morphe. Um, what about? So, talk to me. Let's let's move into like chess theory and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So, talk to me about easy stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, talk to me about like uh, what an open. Well, first, let's do how the pieces move. Right for somebody sure. who doesn't know shit about chess, sure. give me like the one minute rundown on a pawn does this, a queen does that, a bishop does that, so on and so forth. Sure. Well, uh, we'll run through it fast. Um... Uh, we got different pieces. We got the pawn, of course. The pawn only moves forward. First time mm -hmm. it moves, it's going to go two squares at a time. Mm -hmm. After that, one square. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go into the special rules. That's the row the in front. Yeah, the, the special rules. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it just goes two squares first. And after that, only goes one. And I work with kids. Those so are the little guys in the front, right? Yes, they're okay. the first, uh, first eight in, in the row. They capture diagonally. <laughs> they capture diagonally. Okay, and you said that you work with kids at what? Oh, I work with kids all the time. So I'm used to this spiel and... Um, you know, when you work with different people, uh, there's different ways that we learn. So you got the visual things. That Learners. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> visual aids, if you will. Uh, rooks. Rooks are easy. They go up and down and to the sides. Uh, bishops. Bishops, they go diagonally. <laughs> right. And I skipped the knights. The right? knights, they move in an L. Right. And then uh, queens. The queen has the power of the rook and the, and the uh, bishop. Bishop. Diagonally yeah. and up and down. And then the king. Same thing, but one square at a time? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's old, so he only goes one square at a time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, but, but once you know the rules, you start playing, and maybe you learn a special move or two here and there, like castling or whatever, mm -hmm. um, there's strategy, right? And, and these strategies are broken up, if I understand correctly, into like openings, middle game strategy, and end game theory or whatever yeah uh, so so talk, talk to me about those like like what is an opening and give me an example of one sure um one of the one i mean the the show is based off what's called the queen's gambit which is an opening it's a queen's pawn opening mm -hmm. very simple terms when we talk about the chessboard a lot of times you have the king side which is from the king over mm -hmm. the queen side from the queen over mm -hmm. so this is the queen's gambit um it's a it takes three moves to get to the queen's gambit uh -huh. and basically the first few moves that you're choosing is choosing how you want to play in the game the Queen's Gambit is usually a very slow positional game of long-term strategy. Um, later on, they talk about her playing the Sicilian. Uh, that's one of the most aggressive openings you can play with black against uh, King's Pawn E4. And, and it's aggressive, why? Because you're bringing your queen out real quick or something? Like... Any, um, anytime you're trying to play for a win, you have to create an imbalance. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I mean, right. I, I started. Mean, I started. I've started conceptualizing that. Like <laughs> you're talking about, like uh, like um, uh, a rook bishop, yeah, rook, uh, uh, you know, mate or mating attack or something like that, right? There has to be an imbalance in the position. If there's only equality, it's a draw. So you have to create this imbalance in the game. And the Sicilian is such a game of creating this inequality so fast it happens on the first move. White plays pawn to e4, the king's pawn up two squares. Mm -hmm. And then black plays pawn to c5, up two squares. So now there is an imbalance, and you can start playing for a win as soon as move one. And for playing as black, it's already hard to win. Like, statistically speaking, you went second, it's, it's just harder to win. To give yourself those chances for just being bold is pretty great. How much, how much harder? Because, uh, again, in the movie, they mentioned, and, and this has been in the news like before, and, and it's, I think it's uh, kind of common knowledge in chess circles that uh, if two computers who are infinitely masterful you know, at chess go at it with each other, white will always win because of the first move. Is that still like, um, an, like if two AIs, equal AIs, go at it? It'd probably be... It, it probably might be a slight advantage to white, yeah. To white, like yeah. maybe a hundred games, white will probably win like five or ten more. Five, only that. So it's a small advantage. It's a small advantage. Chess will be a, a big mathematically draw. speaking. Mathematically speaking, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't checked on it recently, but I would assume it's something like that. But, but for uh, humans, oh, it's yeah. just in, instinctively easier as white. 
Oh, or... yes. Yeah. I mean, anytime you have an advantage, I think it's easier now. Is, uh... As long as you're a skilled player. And this this is more for my question more than the podcast, but is sure. it easy is it easier to um, do a, a a king a kingside castle, um, white on, on one side versus the other? Yes, yeah. And and the kingside castle is that more uh, is that safer than a queenside castle, or is it just definitely safer? Yeah, uh, that was just my own curiosity. No, 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 you guys okay. can go look it up if you want. But. <laughs> The reason why it's, uh, if you don't mind, I could go into it real quick, why it's uh, better for both those reasons. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah. The king side castling, there's two pieces in the way. Uh-huh. The queen side, there's three. Three. So it's going to happen And then faster. there's more space to, to defend on the queen side, and there's less space to uh, defend on the king side. Is that only for white or white and black? Cause... Oh, well, the game is pretty much symmetrical, so it's true for both cases. Both, yeah. both, both cases. Okay. What about like uh, like middle game theory and end game strategy and all that stuff? Oh, like... well, my favorite part of the game. I've, I've actually spent like the last two years probably studying the openings because when I was growing up, I was pretty much like, you know, Beth Harmon. I, I, like a lot of, uh, you know, Famous players, they get famous because they're very good at attacking. They're good at winning chess games. Uh -huh. You can play the opening perfect. You know, the, uh, as they say, you know, before the, uh, before the end game, they, they place the middle game. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to win. So, you know, but I didn't study openings for a long time. And so middle game is really important. Middle game is a lot of fun. You're either trying to capture your opponent's king by checkmating, which is what I love to do, and Harmon loved to do, Morphe loved to do. And you get to create some, some beautiful pieces of work with it, too. It, it... Because it's a, it's more like, is that because it's an aggressive thing? Because there's more aggression going on in the middle game, or that's one thing I love about chess. It's your personality. Yeah, I'm an aggressive chess player. I love to attack the king. Um, there's players that just play strictly on trying to not make my pieces do anything. They, um, well, I'm actually my favorite chess player. His name is uh, Tigran Petrosian, and for the chess players out there, they know I'm mispronouncing. I can never pronounce. Chess is great because you know it's not like you know only Americans. It's you're going to have Russian players, Italian players. You know, I can't pronounce them. <laughs> but uh, Sagan Petrosian was very known uh, for his uh, very iron-like uh, play. He'd, mm. he'd rarely lose a game in years, years. But he was known as the Python because he'd slowly kill all your pieces play. Mm -hmm. And then he'd slowly just wrap around you and checkmate you. And and I've, I want to say that I've lost a lot that way. <laughs> where it's just like a, a slow death. Way, because that way is systematic and it's scientific. The... To play like an aggressive chess player is very hard because you're playing against these other systematic people that follow principles and rules. So if you break a little bit, that principle or rule will play against you. The attacker has to do with creativity. So it's very hard to be an attacker. Wow. Although if you are a good attacker, the world is going to be your oyster. And I think you alluded to like endgame uh, a little bit. Uh, sure. where Where you like, to, you like to attack the king in the endgame or trap the king. In and the end game, it's uh, at the end game. It just means that basically there's few pieces left on the board, so checkmate is not really uh, liable anymore. In middle game, that's what's one of the fun parts. You can checkmate or try to win material. In the end game, there's very few material left. Left. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to either get a pawn across the board to make a queen, so you can get uh, more uh, material to checkmate. A pawn promotion. You're pawn promotion, about. yes, sir. Uh -huh. Or um, you're trying to win material to uh, get the extra material mm -hmm. to to a queen. Uh, there is not many checkmates in games. Don't get me wrong; it, it happens. It's just less likely because there's because three. if a pawn gets to the other side for 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 the newbies, the, if a pawn gets to the other side of the board, you can promote it to any other officer or you know a high level piece that you want, right? Yes, sir. You, most of the time, I'm assuming that you're going to make it a queen. Of is course. there any is there any instance where you would promote a pawn to like a bishop or a knight? Um, definitely knight. Is it rare? Oh yeah, it's very rare. Yeah, uh -huh. it has to be. It's because it's only a specific position where this is going to be good. There's uh, definitely okay. some with the knight. There's some with the bishop. Sometimes you're just uh, you know toying with your opponent and getting like uh, getting h pawn across and getting eight knights and then checkmating them. Things like that. Ah, uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Chess players can be kind of mean. Yeah, that's like it seems like a like yeah like like a psychological trick. Like you're fucking with them. Like well, they literally, didn't, they didn't resign. Oh, so so you're punishing them for not being a sportsman about it, right? Well, you know, some people like to play until mate, and you can get fun and creative with it. Yeah, Nakamura has some great ones where he's like has six knights and he ends up checkmating. He's Are, one of the top streamers right now, and it just has like ten to 20, say his name again because I, well, I the is he is he Asian? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Japanese, okay. Yes. What what uh, what was what was his name? Uh, Hikaru Nukamara. 
Hikaru and I'm probably mispronouncing Nukemaru. his name too. And he's but one he's of my on favorite Twitch. contemporary player. Yeah, I, I watched him. He plays fast. I think it was like a bullet round or whatever. And I've been just... watching him since I was like 16, and he has gotten much better. It's just amazing. So uh, if if you guys download the Chess.com app or go to Chess.com, there's links to the Twitch yes. channel, and you can you can watch some of these amazing players. Is he a grandmaster? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. He's a he's what they call a, a super grandmaster. Super Grandmaster. Yeah. I didn't know such a thing existed. Yeah, it's it's amazing. How I mean, many of them are there? A Super Grandmaster, I think uh, they they qualify that by a Grandmaster getting to about top t- uh, uh, 2,700 uh, uh-huh. FIDE ranking. UFCF is a United States Chess Federation, which means it's a national ranking system. Mm-hmm. FIDE is French, which I don't know what it, what it stands for, but it basically means world ranking system. World ranking. World ranking. Uh, and do the do the Russians use that system as well? FIDE is everybody. Everybody. Yeah, it's world uh, ranking systems. That's what we've been using for a long time now. I, I can't even tell you when. I'm assuming that they did their research in the Queen's Gambit and 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 accurately stated that at the time the Soviets were like the best at chess. It, was that true, and is that true now with the Russians? They play a little chess. Yeah, no, no, but they, yeah, they were amazing. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think back then, today, like it's it, that's one of the great things about chess and equal. I mean, chess is one of the most equal things I've ever known in life. You can, I'm self-taught. I I, I read books, so I got to this level of strength. But um, yeah, no, it's right now the Russians. Well, back then, Russians were definitely the powerhouse. I mean, these guys are working. 12 hours a day, 14, 16 hours a day. Just The state was paying for them to kick ass. They're paying for them ass. to live and yeah. play chess. And they, wow. you know, there's a lot of politics like, in there. Yeah, there's a lot of politics to... in there too. Yeah, so, yeah. But now, uh, you know, one of the great things is a thing called the internet. And you get to go on there and play chess online. If you want to play a good chess game, like for me to go and play like in San Antonio, like I said, at, at some point within two, two or three years, I already had topped out as far as playing somebody that's really going to give me a challenge. So to be able to go online and play against some of the world's top players or just someone around my own level mm. is a tremendous um, advantage that advantage. this generation has. So do now you, the Russians do not have that sole title anymore. Do you think that that is going to drive human chess playing to a new level, you know, after a couple of generations or have you, have you seen it's that already, already happening now? Wow. Well, I mean, what have you like, have you seen the game change because of online play? Oh, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of things that have changed chess, chess engines. <laughs> Um, have changed it, but just playing online. What's that? Online. What are chess engines? Chess engines. So they've actually created uh, computers to play chess. Okay, like AIs and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And now, you know, unfortunately for me, well, not unfortunate. I can still talk, but um, <laughs> the <laughs> the chess engines can beat anybody. They can beat all humans. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not like even like close. It's just they they win. But I still have a job because even though the computer will think calculations, they you know after like one or two seconds they calculate. A million, ten million moves, kind of thing. Haven't there been humans, or I, I seem to remember some story about a human beating a chess computer? Oh, definitely, yeah. Whenever they were weak, when they were weak, but yes. now they're just like yeah. And if they've gone uh, a lot better, Gary Kasparov was the first world chess champion to lose to a computer. The first time they played was Deep Blue, mm-hmm. and he beat it then. And then they souped it up. I'm assuming that computers now can calculate every possible move on the board. Chess is not figured out. It's not. It's not, no. Checkers is. I'll make fun of you checker players, sorry. Um, chess is not figured out. Up to six pieces on the board, then it is uh, figured out. Any six pieces on the board, I, th- I believe it's like figured out. But the more you add on there, the more it's going to do that. Like They're always building a new chess engine that's even stronger than the last one. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought it was like done like it was just like a human sport at this point oh actually uh, one of the fun things they do now is you build your chess engine and your chess engine goes into a tournament and it plays other oh oh wow so it's like a proxy war with ai and humans kind of yeah it really is it's, it's it's been a lot of fun to see because as as you mentioned like is chess still evolving it's evolving like crazy because these computers are getting stronger and what would humans do we work with the computers and find out some of the tactics or ideas Preparation in chess is an, an amazing one that people put their work into. I mean, it's if you played me in a chess game, most likely the first 10 to 20 moves I've already got memorized in whatever you play. Mm. If you talk about a higher level player, it goes up even more. Like a world champion probably has like up to move 30 or 40, maybe even just booked up into a win. Um, and then you go to computers and then they're just done. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like I, okay, I got this. Have you ever played Go? 
I have played it once with a friend. Um, I haven't got to play it enough. I, I, I wanted to play it, I think, because one of my friends was saying Go still hasn't been uh, figured out either by the yeah. computer, right? It's yeah, that well, yeah, and I think that there's like a lot more squares, and mm-hmm. there's maybe not the same kind of strategy, but a different strategy. I, I don't know. I like I tried. I tried reading the the directions and going back to my impatience. I was like, "Oh fuck this!" Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, goes pretty crazy. Another movie that got me into into a game. It was Tron, Tron oh, Legacy. Okay, yeah. You yeah. remember when uh, Jeff Bridges was like, you know, in his like monk like state in his little. I don't know if you got to see it. Where I love that movie. Yeah, he's in his little apartment. You know, in the in the grid, mm-hmm. and. The camera pans over because he's, he's on his little meditation pillow and he's, you know, <laughs> having a divine moment or whatever. But the camera pans over and there's a go uh, table and she makes reference to that, too. And so, yeah, I tried learning. I was like, oh, this is uh, fucking crazy. Were you crazy. able to see A Beautiful Mind? Beautiful Minds. Oh, I think a long time. It's an older movie, right? Like yes. 90s? Yeah. yeah. I think Russell Crowe's like uh, the guy in there. Are, are they playing uh, Go or chess? They play Go. Oh, okay. And that's one of the things I just always loved about it. And, uh, you know, as a math guy or a person that just likes strategic games, I was like, this is really cool. That's, that is cool, man. Um, so we already mentioned chess.com. Do you use chess.com at all? I, I'm not trying to give them like a, like a, 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 a shot out or whatever, but uh, it seems like that's a, a, a really popular They route. got the name. Oh, so I shan't say it. No, 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 no. They, no um, as far as it goes with chess.com. Oh, you, they, they got own, the popular They name. have the pop, most popular name. I don't actually play on it too often, to be honest. Really? I play on a free, I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the worst things about it. Because I'm a master and anybody who has a, they call us title players. Uh-huh. Because we're titled, we actually get chess.com for free. But I don't play on there. I will go on there to do some lessons with some of my students. Mm-hmm. But there's a thing called uh, Lee Chess or lichess.org. It's completely for free. And I just love it so much more. I play bullet games, which are one-minute games to each person. Mm-hmm. And I, I do it all Is the that time. a website and an app? It's a, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's an app. You can go onto the website. Is it like a white horse with a like yeah, the app? Yeah, Okay, it. okay. I, oh, I, I love I that one so much. I, I, I work on there daily. Okay, all right. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Um, I'm assuming not a lot of like good players screw with like the 3D chess. The graphics intensive chess. It seems a little, it seems a little not, cheesy. No. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll see some kids playing with it, and I'm, I'm always very impressed by what the Them graphics. Being, exactly. I'm like, you can, you can pay attention to this. Like that's impressive. Like they're popping out, and it's already hard to keep uh, keep up with the squares already. Are there tournaments on those apps like Lee and and? If you chess. went on com? there right now, there's about uh, there's always a tournament going on. And then there's probably about two to three hundred people playing, or not, or more. At any given time, yeah. Since um, since uh, COVID Queen's happened, uh-huh. uh huh. There's a pandemic, so uh, since COVID yeah. happened, a lot of people have actually started playing chess more. I don't know what the chess.com numbers are, but Lee Chess actually shows how many people are playing at uh, at um during the day at mm-hmm. all times. So I remember before COVID, it was about fifty to sixty thousand people playing on wow. a rare, uh, on a daily. Since COVID happened, it's gone up to eighty thousand. Wow. And I'm not sure if it's just because, well, I, I'm pretty sure because COVID, people have found the website and, you know, because they're staying home and doing more things. That I'm not sure if chess.com is losing them too. So it's just like, because chess.com you do have to pay for and Lee Chess you do not. That's interesting. Yeah, we're, we're always looking at, uh, at uh, stocks and mm-hmm. like, you know, financial vehicles and, and the chart. And you can see, you know, anytime you go to like mid February through, you oh. know, June everything dropped off right same thing like same thing with any world event you know mm-hmm. the 2008 financial crisis yes. september 11th you know you go back and you see that drop so with naturally with covid it dropped but that's yeah that make that kind of makes sense that you know anything online would have climbed um just did, has been going through a renaissance for quite a while it's been great what do you mean by renaissance a rebirth like it's been picking up quite a bit since just uh, because of covid or like do you think it's like the chess game or did chess is chess ga- did did the queen's gambit come as a result of this renaissance or is it a, a contributing to it it's contributing to it chess was okay. already on the growth uh nakamura Perf, yeah. and other people like i don't know if you've ever heard of a man named uh well again i'm not gonna butcher the name but acmigator Ak- Ak- if you go onto youtube right now he's been analyzing and just doing games he's not a master 
I love watching his stuff. He has the Russian accent, so maybe that's where it comes in. Uh -huh. But all he does is analyze chess games in 5 to 25 minutes. And wow. between there, he has over 500,000 subscribers. And all he does is just go over the game and say, look, this is the game, and this is played in this year. It goes over Morphe games, and chess has just been growing like crazy. We've had a lot of different uh, people doing the uh, International Masters, Grandmasters. They go now online and stream on a regular basis. It's wow. like getting, getting able to uh, hang out with your uh, role models or your idols. You know? yeah. It's just like, oh, I love this guy. There's, there's that guy. <laughs> or uh, this girl. You know? it's like, there's did so Morphe ever write a book? Uh, I don't believe he did. Oh, the Book okay. of Morphe is based off his games and ideas and strategies that came from watching his games. I don't believe he ever did that. I think they said that he only gave one chess or gave chess lessons to his uh, boyhood friend. I believe uh, in. But yeah, his I, games are written down, though, right? Oh, like that's they're documented. The, would you like to live forever? You know, yeah. If you could play a truly beautiful game, you will live forever. Wow. And some of these people, you know, I memorize a lot of the chess games. So, so, and the reason you can play those games is because of because they record it through chess no, notation, right? That's one of the things that I I don't think we covered mm -hmm. when we were talking about like you know the rules and stuff because it, it gets a little dry. I wanted to chop that up. No, it's okay. But like, so that's my life. I'm glad, <laughs> dude. I, <laughs> so I'm so glad I remembered this because I wanted to ask you. Um, there seems to be. And I haven't like dug into it deep myself, but there seems to be two versions of chess notation, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. There's like the version that like I saw a YouTube video on where it's like the squares are numbered and lettered A through H and one through eight, right? Yes. And so, you know, you can cross section those and find out where, you know, A6 is or whatever, right? But there's another one that they use in the Queen's Gambit where they refer to it by like Queen's Bishop mm -hmm. four and stuff like that, right? Is that just like are you just referring to the to the columns as like this is where I mean, can you explain that to me? Like sure. um the old one or the new one? The older one, the the fancy one. Sure. Right? I'm assuming it's the older one, right? Like King's yes. Bishop. I, I, you know, I feel bad. My older friends are going to get mad at me because I, I forgot the name of it. I, I actually, I can read it if I, if I want to. There's a not... name for this system. Oh yes, sir. Uh -huh. There's always a name. Uh, <laughs> there's always a name with chess players. Uh -huh. Um, but uh, yeah, I forget the old one. The new one that we use is called algebraic notation. It's very simple because each square just has its own letter and value to it. Uh huh. A that's through. the old one that that's the new one the new one uh -huh. the old one is separated into two separate sections as i kind of mentioned to you earlier there's the king side and uh -huh. the queen side that's how they'll do it it's so the queen's bishop exactly and then, and then it's the like knight four okay and is it uh is four based off of like based from the the white side i believe oh yes yes yeah, yeah. um okay. with with the old one i'm not too sure i i can't i maybe yeah but then nobody uses that anymore? Oh, well, you know, we, we sell people alive from there until, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know when you're playing an older player because you just look at what kind of notation. And they using. just, oh, wow. And, 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 so, and it's written differently too, like KB4 mm -hmm. instead of like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Well, yeah, that's just something I was wondering. Yeah, about. no, no worries. Yeah. I, uh, I look at it sometimes. I'm like, oh, gosh. I, I, like, I can figure it out if I want to, but I... If, uh, I'm a bit if lazy with that. If somebody wants to get involved like in chess right now, where do they go? In San Antonio or just anywhere? Um in San Antonio and anywhere. Like I sure. mean, is there like like do they go through a Facebook most places have like a Facebook group or is there like a like a website, you know, anything specific? Uh, if you want to join chess anywhere, and I highly recommend Lee Chess. Chess.com is another venue. Both of these are great places. Mm -hmm. They both have great learning tools. I will say Chess.com does have a lot more better learning tools for actually learning how to get strategies and you can pay a monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. If you just want to go and have fun and play, Lee Chess is going to be where it's at. It's free uh, to sign up for both of these and your lim but Chess.com they limit at some point for how many games or whatever, but Lee Chess will always be for free. And those are the best places you can go, like I said. 80,000 people playing and just having fun. Is that the way you play chess mo mostly now like in your free free time or do you still sit down and use a board uh these days i'm you know i'm, I'm limited to only uh mostly online actually i did open up my chess club again so this last sunday mm. you can tell how hungry people are you know we had our mask on and everything and um i went ahead and opened up my chess club uh from 12 to 4 i've mentioned on this show before 
Oh. That we're at an eight foot table and okay. we're socially distanced, but just in case you know you you show clips of this or whatever, oh, okay. we should mention that we're yeah, socially he's, distanced. He's and, far away. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, do you ever play on on a board? Like, I love to play on the board. I mean, there's something very much. Chess will never go out of date, at least in my mind. As long as people are not, uh, as long as people are social, chess will never go out out of date in person because. Um, as we kind of alluded to earlier, whenever you're playing for fun, you know, you're kind of talking some shit. You're just like, ah, yeah, look at that. That's a really good move, man. Like, oh my God, that's great. That, it's insane the way you guys play with each other. Oh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty merciless here in San that, Antonio. That's awesome. Yeah. I'd hate to face you, but, uh, <laughs> especially with an jokes. ego, like it, I think it's a beautiful thing to watch somebody with an ego get broken down, you know, somebody that needs it, you know, but you're almost doing them a favor, right? Cause uh, some people, yeah, some people would differ with that idea, but <laughs> <laughs> my, my ego's too big. I don't know. If somebody doesn't want to play or wants to get a board, I noticed because I was looking at Amazon.com, mm -hmm. like there's a, there the the Chess Federation has kind of like a cheapy $20 mm -hmm. rollout chess board with like some weighted pieces and stuff like that. Um, but I, I saw some pretty high-end chess oh, boards yes. on there, right? I saw a chess with a, I was looking for an expensive one, right? Because I was like, what's the most expensive? Got to get wood. Chess board. Yeah, yeah. It was like wood. It had inlays similar to the way a guitar has ivory inlays, you know, on the neck. It had like real fancy inlays in the wood and stuff. Um, it was somewhere around $600. Have you ever seen anything beyond that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Like, I mean, especially when you're, you're you're talking about the different type of chess sets. The one I have, I think, is $500. Uh -huh. So it just really depends what, what you're buying from. And it's like a box with a drawer. You put the pieces on the inside. Similar kind of fancy wood job. Um, what is it? Stone or metal pieces? Or what do you... I mean, what are the... When you're dealing with a... When, anytime end. you're dealing with a, uh, you know, what is it called? A decoration piece? Uh -huh. Go with the metals. Go with these beautiful things. If you're going to actually get a chess set to actually play with, you most likely will get wooden pieces. Okay, all just right. because you know, if, I mean, I I love it. Like, like people will tell me I got a glass chest, and I was like, ah, oh, that's, uh, that's that's great. <laughs> it seems real cheesy. I thought the glass was was cheesy, and I'm not talking like, bad about it. I'm sorry. I'm just saying I I would I don't want to play with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take some plastic pieces of anything. When you're looking for a usable, not a decoration piece, like a usable, like badass chess set, like do, I mean, do you give any? Any consideration to like aesthetics, like that kind of thing? You said wood. Oh, definitely. But is there anything else? It's like, man, if I'm gonna get like a day to day chess board that's like badass, it's my chess board. Like, what are you looking at? Um, unlimited budget, you know. Unlimited, but yeah, I mean, I'm definitely gonna grab the wooden one. Um, typically, if they're going to uh, be robust with their style, you're gonna look at the knights. The knights is really where they're gonna add a lot of the aesthetics and making it look nice. Mm -hmm. Another part is the weight to it. A lot of people will get triple weighted pieces. So they just put some lead in there or something. Uh, if you uh -huh. go to my chess club, all of them, they're plastic and there's no lead in them. Kids will put their finger in there, take it out, start licking them. I don't know why. Right. So they're, they're plastic pieces. So, But typically when you're playing with adults or just people, they want you just want a weight to it. You know, it just wants to feel well. If you ever play chess in like a park, you're going to grab a clock that goes every time you hit it. They have some that are silent. Uh -huh. I guarantee you won't love it as much as like hearing Every that time. it's oh, like that aesthetic thing what, what about i'm glad you brought up the clocks what about like what what are people using are they using the new electronic ones or are they using analog clocks more oh gosh if you showed up with an analog i would be like we're, we're not doing this man like, not, <laughs> how much time do i have i'm trying to watch a, a little uh, so flag. so i <laughs> so i saw two different electronic clocks i saw one it's got like like digital numbers it's like yes. a black metal box with digital numbers and it's got like a flat metal button on top mm -hmm. and then i saw the plastic ones that kind of have the seesaw switch yes on yeah. it so what what are people using i mean the, it's, the it's a combination part. of both of those it really two. is and if you don't mind i'm gonna throw out if you're looking for a good chess set uh, check out my friend's website american uh -huh. chess equipment yeah he'll set yeah. you up shelby American chess equipment dot com. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And I was going to ask you that too. I it's had like, to, I had to throw a shout out to him. He's yeah, been, yeah, absolutely. He's been helping me. I actually have my own uh, boards uh, printed with my logo on there and everything. They did a great job. Yeah, dude. We'll throw his uh, website in the show notes afterwards. Oh, thank you. Well, you better uh, throw mine in there then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 and I, I would have, I would have put uh, more information on the social media post that I was putting earlier, but I just saw the your 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 business uh, URL. 
on on your uh, on your Instagram. So did you check out our um, our Instagram then for Complete Chess? No, I didn't know you guys had. I just saw your Instagram. I didn't know you, Complete Chess had. Uh, you think I'm Instagram. nerdy now? You need to check out the chess memes that we have because they are for chess players, and it's so funny. Like if you, if, if if you play chess and you check out these memes, they're just. I mean, to me, they're hilarious. I, I you know I pay uh I pay my friend to make my chess memes for me. His name is Eddie, and it's it's worth every penny. What is the name of uh that Instagram page? It should be uh, uh the Instagram page. It should be a. Uh, uh, just like the name, complete chess. Complete it might, chess. Uh, yeah, it should be just complete chess. Yeah. We're streaming. My processor's like oh yeah. processing shit, so I might not. Might oh, it's not. Okay. It's, so it's just complete chess. Let's pull it up. Let's look at it. We, we yeah, can pull please it do. Up. Um, uh, I <laughs> like if you there is a little knowledge to know about chess, but if you know uh, if you know chess, I mean, I think we have like four thousand people that uh, follow on complete follow chess me. on IG. Uh, well, f- follow a complete chess on there for the wow. memes and everything. Um, I love him. Like I said, like this guy just makes so many funny chess memes, and it's amazing how true they are when he makes them. Because uh, there's different personalities. In there. That's uh, going back to the chess imitating life thing. Why is it giving me? Oh, here it is. is this it? This first one, the green one. Um, Complete yeah, chess. That's, is that's that it. Like... Yeah. All right. Pull that this up. business was started by me and my uh, two friends. We've been we've been up for three years now. So let me yank this off. Do you mind if I grab a little bit more if I top myself up? Or I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. That's that's for us, man. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought long. we were gonna. I, I was wondering what was taking you so long. I, was, <laughs> I wasn't sure when we were gonna finish, so I was just like, "Yeah, it's all good." Here, let me pull this. I should just say that uh, I'm trying to get. I figured I had free time, so. Yeah, man. You have all the time you need. <laughs> that's all right. Not too. Uh, Wasted. Yeah, there's there's some of our chess memes. That, uh, yeah, I'm, that's when you know you're nerdy whenever you're on chess. Like, chess meme. Yeah, here. So I'm pulling it up, so we can take a look at it. This is and now now this isn't completechess.com. This is just like a meme yes, website that you memes. work. Yeah. So uh, any uh, this is oh my meme. god. Depending, I mean, if you go to our Facebook, we'll we'll throw on some of these onto our Facebook. Facebook, we have about a thousand followers on there. Uh-huh. Uh, well, fourteen hundred. Uh-huh. Most of that is, you know, due to age groups. We do a lot more puzzles and a lot more information about chess for kids. And then, of course, Instagram was uh, kind of for my generation or maybe a little bit younger. So it's it's just all funny stuff and just dumb jokes about chess. Why did this? I didn't even see this new one. What is this one? Can you click on that first one? What yeah, is that this, one about? Yeah, yeah. Please be nice in the chat. <laughs> Dude, get wrecked. This... <laughs> so, so explain that to me. Are there sure, like people um, that are... Uh... If you can guess, people are can be very mean inside the, the chat rooms. Uh-huh. And so this right here is called Fool's Mate. This is how you lose in chess in two moves. Bringing the, bringing the queen's pawn out? Uh, bringing that, the or, queen or the to king? H4 checkmate. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was um, <laughs> I was looking at some of those openings, and apparently there's moves that only grandmasters and shit will do successfully, or like uh, you can do it, man. <laughs> do it. No, Why not? The best way to become a, ch- a good chess player is to imitate those. Psy- man. Psych them out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh... You don't understand why you're playing it. I guarantee you're going to try and figure it out better. The guy that I was watching said, like, only grandmasters play this successfully in the opening. Like, I think it was like uh, bringing, uh, I can't remember, it was black or white, but mm-hmm. it was one of the pawns out towards the right hand side. I don't know who this is, but I disagree with him. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I'll take you versus Mr. Random on YouTube. Well, I, I don't know who it was. YouTube. But... I think it was just a random chess club teacher or something like that. I don't think there's anybody on your level. Um, so like what's next for you? Are you, are you looking towards, uh, going on to like some kind of national competition or are you looking towards grandmaster? Yeah. Oh, as I said before, this is like the Olympics. I'm, I'm pretty much retired at this point as far as, Become a world chess champion. What um, what does retired mean in the chess world? Because that means like I guess you top out or something like that. Because it seems like people are referred to being retired as topping out, like or finding your level. Yeah, I mean, um, no, good. Um, I mean, when it comes to chess, I mean, I could 
keep playing and I, uh, and maybe someday I could become a grandmaster if I really, really worked hard and, you know, if, if everything really went well in my life, it's not even guaranteed. Yeah. And so, I mean, to me, and maybe this is just my thought process, if, if I'm not the world champion, then, you know, what am I going to do? Just to make it to grandmaster. If I make it to grandmaster, I'll be one of the lowest level grandmasters. So it's just like so it's like being a, going from being the big fish in the small tank to go to being a small fish in in well no it's just like okay so what 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 do I what do I get out of this trade of my time like my time in life is very important to me right I teach kids I work I get to spend time with my family girls every now and then yeah like what do I get out of this people already call me you know grandmaster already they don't know the difference yeah so to me it's just like what what do I get out of this I get to uh, beat a few more too. people yeah my ego's not that great <laughs> yeah. well that's I, I like i said that's good i guess like sometimes people need their ego placed in check and if you're and if you're managing your own ego then that's probably a healthy thing right um i, I, I play new games these days but I, I mean i love chess i'm always going to continue to play i'm always going to try and get stronger it's just for me like i know where my level's at and i know it's not going to get there yeah so it's within means i'm not going to sacrifice other things in my life was realizing that like a like a humbling experience like when you like i mean do you remember coming to that conclusion you know it's like oh yeah i think i think i found my 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 spot in the chess world like Um, was that difficult i bet it it sounds like it would be something that'd be like difficult for a lot of alphas oh really you know i'm i'm just assuming like a lot of alpha grandmasters that you know are intent on being the best at everything they do always successful you know they end up to a point they they come to a point where it's like i'm never going to be better than this you know it's like kind of like uh i don't want to get into politics but some people don't don't do well losing or you know going on to that next level um to me i i don't know if it was a it wasn't that big of a deal to me i guess i mean um you know i was really struggling i want one of my biggest goals was to make master. Yeah. I mean, I, that was your, I, that was your focus. That was, yeah. I mean, yeah. being city, San Antonio city chess champion, you bet I'm going to try every year to win it. I have good chances to win every year too. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I'm gonna are you ever it. worried about like Benny Watt says, you know, playing too many opens can only hurt me. Are you ever worried that like somebody, maybe not worried, but like, Oh, maybe someday somebody's going to creep up on me. And like, uh, it, it, it's exciting for me. I like yeah. to be challenged. Who is the last master? That that I played, that, that, yeah, that you beat. Who had like five championships ago or whatever? Oh, who who did you take down? The so the previous guy was Shelby Anderson. He was San Antonio State champion eleven years. Wow. So I'm trying to that. That's my goal now. I I, I live in goals. Like yeah. right, right now, my chest rating is like twenty two seventy. I'm nice. trying to get twenty three hundred. Like I said, if I hit Grandmaster, that's great. But it's not my big focus. My I'm you know small goals at a time. Why? So right. the next one is to try and get the next chess tile, like, try to get the next one. Um, it's not my whole world because, mm-hmm. again, that's that's I mean, it would it wouldn't fulfill anything more to me. Right. Um, what about like uh, students? Do you have any students that you maybe want to call out by like first name that are showing promise that you think you know may come up? I want to be dethroned by one of my students. Uh-huh. That's one of my life goals. And mm-hmm. I have uh, I have so many great kids that I get to work with, man. Yeah, I have so many. Um, Jerry work I've been working with him for about gosh three, four years. Uh huh. Get to see the. I mean, that's, I'm very privileged that I get to work with these kids. They love chess. I love chess. They look up to me, and we get to talk about chess and just get better at chess. So it's it's, it's such a great experience, man. Um, yeah, Jerry work has been doing great. He's been playing. I guess, like I said, with me for like three, four years. He's one of the top players here in San Antonio. Uh-huh. Uh Yashwag Raju. He has done amazing uh, recently. He puts in the work and effort. I give him a book and I say, you got to read this in a week and he does it. Uh, wow. A lot of people don't realize, like I said, if you meet someone who wins a lot, that means mm-hmm. they lost a lot. They put the work into it. You don't just win a chess game because like, ah, you know, I just kind of play every once in a while kind of thing. It seems like kind of like my, you know, my daughter was taking piano for a little bit and it can be like really intense and, mm-hmm. and, and, and frustrating, I think at times. And it seems a little bit like piano. It seems like there's, Maybe even more complicated than piano, you know. Um, it Depending seems like there's at. a lot more going on with well, chess. What's one of the cool things about chess? And I, I think one of the reasons why I got so good was because one of my favorite things to do in my free time, even now, I just go and study chess books. I just read chess books. After so many hours I put in, I don't make dumb mistakes, you know. Like, I, like I said, I can calculate ten to twenty moves ahead. 
I can do That's blind. Insane. I can do blindfold games. When you say ten to twenty moves ahead, you're talking about ten to twenty moves for every possible piece on the other side of the table. Yes. Or well, we don't calculate bad moves, so that takes out some of the variations, right? Uh, There's only okay. some moves that are good. If you're moving, but if but if the other player makes a blunder or like pulls something out that you weren't expecting. Um, like, are you ever playing somebody and they make a stupid move and you got to ask yourself, is this a stupid move on their part or am I missing something? Depending on the person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. If I'm playing a master, I will definitely second guess and be like, let's see what this is. Uh-huh. If I'm playing against somebody I know is, hasn't been particularly a well. Chump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I will take all of a, a millisecond to take the piece. Cool, man. Or checkmate them. Which, whichever um, happens first. And I didn't mean to have you like uh, single out uh, one specific student. Like I know that you're probably very proud of all of them. Oh, I love all my students, yeah. man. They're so cool. They love to work hard. Some of them are very casual. Tierna Rourke, um, he doesn't really put as much work as Yak does, but he likes to play. And every time he gets a lesson, he puts in the work in there. He does do some casually. But Yak is like doing like, you know, he's, he's, he's trying to become master in, I think, three years. He's 11 mm. years old. Wow. So, and he's put the work into it. Um, so, you know the chess ratings, right? Uh, uh, kind yeah, of. Well, yeah. His I'm, ratings I'm... about what Harmon's is, like 2,000. Uh, it took her like a while to get to 1,800, right? To that level, His yeah, ratings yeah. higher than hers already. Yeah, they, they made a big <laughs> deal about like, I think, 1,800 because that was what Beltic was. Or yes. that was that, that was how high you needed to be like to get it to... To get to Beltic or something like that, I can't remember. If, if we look online, you could see like what the uh, rating percentile would be for Lee Chess. His Lee Chess Blitz is like two thousand or nineteen hundred. That would probably put him into like I don't know, at least top twenty percent on Lee Chess, which is about eighty thousand people. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, what 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 would I Google in that? Like, what would I pull up for? Oh, um, just go to Lee Chess, L I Chess dot org. L I Chess dot org. Mm-hmm. And. You can, it's, it's, I love the website. It's just so simple. Yeah, you can put his name in there. Um, gosh, what is his name? I can't even think of it now. Oh, uh, <laughs> you, were you flipping through some of these, uh, these memes still? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, it's, uh, yeah, well, that's just, uh, it's not, it's not on the stream yet. Oh, okay. we're, we're on there right now. So do I go up here to menu? Uh, so then... you see where that, um, what do they call Wheel. it? Uh, Settings. Ma- magnifying glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Search. You click on there, on the magnifying glass. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think of it. Actually, let me just open it up real quick and I'll look him up. It's his name, yes, Wong. Uh, well, on Lee Chess, it's... Um, he's probably on there right now. It gives you a rating system that they use or it's the general... Yes, it's one that, 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 that they use. And that's one of the fun things these days is that we all have different rating systems. Each website does, each nation does, the FIDE does. So oh, you have wow. different ways of trying to uh, uh, do it with them. But yeah, it's, it's underneath the search. And gosh, now I'm, now I'm embarrassed because I can't spell. <laughs> Let me see here. Uh, ah, great. I played them earlier. It's right here. Are these games going on right now? Don't yes, sir. Oh, yeah, they're wow. always playing, man. Uh, these people will not give up. Never. And they keep all your games, so they are here forever. So it's great that I get to see like all these world champions and grandmasters play because you know I can look at their games anytime I want to. It's um oh gosh, I clicked on the wrong one. No oh, one, it's right there. There we go. It's a Y A K. Y A K in in search. Yes, sir. Y A K. S H. W A G. And so he's 11 years old. Uh, and yeah, there, there's his information. Um, 11 wow, years it old. really it charts it out like this. That's oh yeah, intense. no, it, 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 look how many games he's played. See that one with the comma next to it. He's put some time and effort into this. Every once in a while, you get these kids that put the work into it. Wow. And they're, I mean, like I said, he's doing better than most people. I mean, so like, uh, if we can scroll up a little bit. Sure, if, sure. Can you click on the, 
I don't oh, know. okay. <laughs> there's hand san- there's hand sanitizer right there if you need it. So, oh yeah, he plays Ultra Bullet, which means he plays 30 second games. Mm-hmm. I don't even do that. That's insane. Uh, these are one minute games. That's one minute each person. If you run out of time, you lose the game. Wow. These are his three minute games. You can see his rank is 71,000. So he's better than 86.6% of players on here. Wow. And I, I don't know how many people play on here. I assume it's like a lot. And has uh, every game on here is, is on. That's so really cool. Rank is, well, when it goes to Ultra, but it goes even up more. Not 85.6. So that's about average, I guess, for him. 84. So he's already in a, in a very top percentile. All right, let's boast on myself. But Jesse James, 88. For free to space? add me on here. Uh, no space. Oh. Okay, let me try that again. That's me. You can see I got my little NM next to me, which just means National Master. Damn. Pretty impressive. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so here you can see my information, so my rank. Uh, I'm a charts guy. Is it, is it flatter just because there's less variance in your performance over the same period of time? or Definitely, and it definitely depends um, how much I've been uh, drinking and, uh. <laughs> and what time of the night it's at. These games keep on are, drinking, dude. I, I plan to get you wasted before I play you at the end luck. of the night. Dude. <laughs> I I, uh, I always tell people I made master at the flying saucer. I did a lot of studying there. Yeah, it's yeah. That that's a cool bar for. It seems like it would be a cool bar to play chess at. Do you play chess there? Oh yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I, I I I would go there and sit down on like Mondays and Sundays and have a pint and just study chess there. And every once in a while, someone would come up and play me a game and. They'd be like, do you play chess a lot? I'm like, I play a little bit. Uh, so, yeah. Do you tell them afterwards, like, uh, I smoked you because of I always tell them afterwards because yeah. if I tell them before, they will never play me. Wow. Yeah. Uh, do, any, do any people feel, like, honored or impressed or, like, appreciated? A lot of people yeah. are very nice about that. I, yeah. I usually never tell anybody I'm a master or, I, or, or even I play chess. Yeah. It's just something that if I tell the people that, then I from forever, even, like, in high school, once I started winning chess tournaments, I was the chess guy. Uh, yeah. So I, I didn't really want to be... Uh, They'd be walking on Generalized. eggshells or like maybe they might not want to play you at all. Or I get too many metaphors about chess in my life after people hear that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, uh, this was fun, dude. Um, is there anything else that you want to include? Do you want to call out any of your other social media accounts, websites? Oh, yeah. If you um, don't mind. Um, so uh, uh, the name of my business is. Comp- uh, do you want to- oh, here you go. Yeah, I'm just going to. Nine, nine point five percent. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you said, so the name of your business is? Yes, uh, completechesseducation.com. And, and, and the, it, name, name, the name of my business is Complete Chess. And, and, and it's like a lesson, like you, t- you give out lessons? Uh, yeah. Right now, uh, due to COVID, we're doing all our lessons online. So um, Monday through Sunday, if, if you want to get a chess lesson, you pay uh, the, base, the, the basic one, the basic plan we have is $75. Mm-hmm. Uh, $75 for the month, you get two lessons a week. That's badass. Um, I teach on there. I have other coaches that I teach, and we have different levels. So if you're like a kid, an adult, um, depending what level you are, mm-hmm. um, you could just go on different days. But, and we have some days that are just for any level that wants to, wants to play. Cool. And, uh, and social media, like, what, like if somebody wants to – you already mentioned uh... – yeah. What was it? Uh, complete chess <laughs> memes or what was it? Complete chess. Uh, complete chess uh, uh, at Instagram. Yeah. Okay. All right. And cool. uh, our Facebook is. I do a lot of work on there. Um, right. Is uh, complete chess. And then also, you're a moderator of San Antonio Chess Club on Facebook, right? I'm I'm the San Antonio Chess Club president too. And I, San I wear a lot of different hats in, wow, the, in the yeah. chess community. Busy guy. Well, now I'm excessively grateful for you making time to come and do this, man. Oh, of course. Yeah. So we're going to get time out is of here. after 8 p.m. Um, that, uh, yeah, that, 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 uh, larceny bourbon flask is yours and you're free to fill it up with as much of whatever <laughs> bourbon we drink whiskey neat here. Oh, thank so, you. Um, yeah, man. Um, so thanks for coming out, man. Anything yeah. else you want to include before we're, we're on our way out? Uh, I, I don't, th- uh, I just want to thank you so much for being a gracious host. It was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. I'm, I'm it was so happy that, fun. you know, you, uh, you guys are always, in, uh, get interested in what, what we do for a living. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so one of the uh, things that I haven't quite figured out yet is is how I, I I bring myself out. I used to have like a system where I bring us out of the podcast, mm-hmm. but I, I had to do some tweaks. And so like my outro is all jacked up. No so we're just going to make it out quick. Uh, but I really appreciate you coming out, man. Yeah, Cheers. no, that was, this was a lot right. of fun. 
Guys, we'll see you later. Cheers.